Look at how she's sleeping in this chair. Oh, hi. I didn't mean to wake you. I'm sorry, Jester. She's like, I'm going back to sleep. Hello, welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name is Sky. I'm a fantasy author who typically writes paranormal romance under the name S.D. Hagis. And today I'm talking about the 24-hour novel challenge. Uh, this is going to be a vlog of my experience with this challenge because it's the first time I'm partaking in it. And yeah, um, I think I might have gone officially insane. Yay. So during one of my live streams, Eva mentioned one that... Uh, she mentioned a bunch of different challenges that she's going to be doing in July, and this was one of them. The official one is done by 24 Hour Novel, which I will leave a link in the description to them. And they did it in June, but both Eva and I missed it. And so when she mentioned that she was going to do this one, I was like, I'll join you because I'm an idiot who apparently does not really care about herself and wants to kill herself. So yeah, I did not take into account what this actually means until yesterday and this morning. <laughs> Oh boy. So, in short, the challenge is to write 50,000 word novel, kind of like Nano, across 24, hour 24 hours total. Um, and you can split that 24 hours however you want across three days. That is what the challenge is essentially. Eva said she was going to be doing eight hours per day across the entire weekend. And I've been saying I'm going to do eight-ish hours per day because I'll probably do more hours on the 5th than I will do on Friday the 5th than I will do on either Saturday or Sunday. But we shall see. I am tracking what hours and what I work on when. But as far as like how far I get, we'll see. I'll be happy if I can hit 25k before the end of the weekend. But we'll see what, exactly what happens. Um, so yeah. What project am I going to be working on? Well, I did not pick one until yesterday and that may have been a mistake. So lately, if you've been watching my videos, I redid my Kanban board and I've done it in a way so that my first goal, which is all my writing projects, instead of picking a particular writing project, I am doing it by task blocks, which is a group of, which is about a 25 minute block um, in which to work. And that's how I'm tracking my writing related stuff this year. And uh, because I'm a project hopper, I came up with a way to kind of release myself from the ability to pick my own projects and hopefully get myself to hop a little less. And by doing that, I'd be created a spinning wheel. I have a whole video on how I created the spinning wheel of Chaotic Doom, which I will link in the description. But essentially, I put all of my projects on the spinning wheel and I'm going to let it spin and choose my project. And that's what I decided to do this time. I will put a video clip here of the first time I spun it. And unfortunately, it picked a project that is a duology where I have completely written the first one and it just needs an entire rewrite and restructuring and um, stuff like that. And the second one in that duology, it is written either the first half or first three quarters of it is written. And I didn't want to do something that I already started. I wanted to do a brand new project that I haven't started yet. So I spun it again and those results will be here. And this time it picked Skywriters of Altera, which is a trilogy in a shared world. And before I go into more detail about how that works, I kind of need to tell you about my feelings of epic fantasy and my history with epic fantasy, because that is essentially kind of sort of not exactly what this series is. When I think of epic fantasy, I think of authors like Robert Jordan, Brandon Sanderson, George R.R. R. Martin, Mercedes Lackey. There's bunches of out there, but those, those are the main ones I think of off the top of my head. And epic fantasy to me is really hard for me to read because I tend to see the descriptions and stuff, the very long paragraphs of the history of the world, the world building, the description of places, and I tend to skim it until I get to some dialogue and some action. And because of that, I am not really reading a lot of epic fantasy these days. I don't tend to like it these days because of that reason. And they're just super long and I have a shitty memory. I can barely remember what happened five pages ago, much less 500 pages ago, when a book is like 500 plus pages long. So I just don't tend to read them that often. That being said, I recently finished getting the whole series of The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan on audiobook, and I plan on listening to it at work. So take what I say with a grain of salt. I do enjoy rap epic fantasy, just not that often. Anyways, all that to say is that one of the things I really enjoy about fantasy is the fact that you can do this whole realm 
And you can do a bunch of different stories in a bunch of different places across a bunch of different histories in that same world. It is done in one of my favorite books ever, which is by Mercedes Lackey. You know how most people cannot pick a favorite book? They can pick like a top five, top 10 or stuff like that, but they can't pick one. That's not me. Magic's Pawn by Mercedes Lackey. I absolutely adore this book. I love the world building. I love the world. I love the characters. This was my introduction to epic fantasy. This was my introduction to LGBT characters. Like this has everything. To me, yes, there are problems with this book. However, to me, this book is chef's kiss. I absolutely adore this book. What I like most about this book is that it is the first in a trilogy. However, it is actually the second series in a world if you go by timeline. And actually, there might be even more now because this author is still writing books in this world and still releasing books in this world. This world has a bunch of different trilogies. It has a bunch of different standalones. It has a bunch of different anthologies. And this is what I love the most. And I don't know, it's not in that book or my copy of that book. And I don't know if there's a more updated one that's not in any of the books I have. But my favorite thing about that series, that world, is that she has built this timeline with the reigns of the different kings and queens and all of our stories revolve on different timelines in that same world um whether they're standalones or series and i've always loved that and i wanted to emulate that this is actually i think i think this is now part of a series but at the time of its publication it was a standalone while this one was the first in a trilogy and i've always loved and i wanted to emulate that kind of shared world um, where I could put as many stories because I could feature different characters, I could feature different kingdoms, I could feature different um, places and timelines in a history of that world. And I've always wanted to emulate that, but I wanted to do it with kind of, I wanted to do it with dragons and I wanted to do it with a portal fantasy, which is where we come in with Skyriders of Altera because this story actually, this series, this trilogy, actually started off as a standalone fantasy that I wrote back in high school. And at the time, it is still to this date the longest story I have ever written at 85k. There's a lot of things wrong with it. A lot of things. I recognize that. Um, however, at the time I was writing it, what had happened was I was in a computer class and I was finishing up my daily work that he had assigned for everyone much quicker than everyone else in the class and he didn't want me to just sit there the instructor didn't want me to just sit there and twiddle my thumbs so I asked him if I could type up my stories and he was like sure go for it so I did and I wrote the entire novel in his class <laughs> and my husband and I shared that class together it was one of the few classes we had together actually I think it was the only class we had together I think so because we were in different grade levels so I think that was the only class we had together and he didn't finish quite as fast as me but almost as fast as me and so I would type and he would read <laughs> he would read what I typed and it's actually still to this day the only story he's actually written all the way through that he's consistently checking with me and going so when are you going to return to that world when are you going to publish that book when are you going to rewrite that book when are you going to do this when are you going to do that when are you going to do this and I'm just like I don't know someday someday and apparently today's that day so I have in my notion, I've got two different series that were just supposed to be the first in many trilogies in this world. This world is a fantasy, it is a portal fantasy series where characters from our timeline are transported to this fantasy world, like an isekai. Um, and the idea behind it was like, what I, I was obsessed at the time with the Lost Colony. I don't know if we were going over it in class or something, but... Um, I was obsessed with the Lost Colony. I was like, what if the Lost Colony was transported to another world? And that's where the idea blew. I built this world around the idea that dragons bonded with humans and formed a dragon rider pairing. And the first dragon rider was Virginia Dare, the, the, one of the babies, one of the most famous babies with the Lost Colony. And... From there, the idea percolated into what it is. And even in this fantasy world, Virginia Dare has already grown on, uh, grown older, passed on. She is a she is a legend in that fantasy world, just as she is a legend here in our world. Um, 
And that was the idea behind that book. However, that book has since become the second book in a trilogy, with the first book being about one of the main characters' mentors, and then the third book being about children, his children. So the main character in the second book, his mentor is the main character in the first book, and his children are the main characters in the third book. Um, and then I have another series that deals with another part of the world where there's where the magic works a little differently and they work in tandem with different gods. I promise it all might make sense when I come when it comes out. But this is the reason it took me so long to return to the series is because I felt that I wasn't on par with writing it. And this is where I why I was talking about the epic fantasy because this to me was my epic fantasy. However, my writing style is definitely closer to that of a YA as far as like the stylistic prose type. Um, my sentence structures, my, my lack of description, my lack of detailing of the world building in huge chunky paragraphs and pages upon pages of history. M my lack of all that puts me more in the stylistic choice of young adult rather than epic fantasy. And to me, what I wanted this to be was an epic fantasy. However, I have since come to the conclusion in over these years that I probably won't ever write epic fantasy in the terms that I think of epic fantasy with compared to like Robert Jordan and um, Mercedes Lackey and all of them. As much as I would love to be like on par with them, I have settled into the idea that I am not like them. I do not write like them. I write more like Tamara, Tamara Pierce and Cassandra Clare as far as like the stylistic choices. I'm not saying that my books are like theirs at all. I'm just saying that the style is more like that. I am somewhere in between because while my story premise, my story style and my writing prose style is more like young adult because I do feature adult characters and I feature... Um, more adult topics and I have more violence and I have more um, sometimes gore and I have sometimes smexy times. No, I try not to lie to write. Wow. Mm, cannot talk. I try not to write a lot of smexy times because it just does not appeal to me. But they're definitely more sensual than a lot of what is allowable. There's a lot more allowable these days than there was back when I originally wrote this in Young Adult. So I call myself a new adult writer where it's kind of like that middle mark between young adult and adult. It's not recognized in traditional publishing. It is recognized in indie publishing. So if you've read any of my books, that's the style I say I write. I say I write new adult books. And that is where strictly where this series lands. It lands as a new adult fantasy. And I think I'm finally ready to tackle it, especially since the wheel is like, this is what you're gonna do today. I don't necessarily believe in fate in the same way some people do. I don't believe in destiny. Sorry, Witcher. Sorry, Geralt. But once the wheel chose this and I had a good sit down and think about it, I was like, am I ready to return to this world and start tackling it? And I think the answer is yes, I am. Now that I've finally established myself as someone who's not gonna ever write the epic fantasies that all of these great authors have written. I say great because I'm putting them more on a pedestal than I need to, basically. Um, they are great. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying they aren't. Um, what I'm saying is that there's no reason why I can't be on the same level of them, even though my writing is completely different. There's no reason why I can't be on par with them as far as like where I stand as far as greatness goes. Will I ever be as great as them? Probably not, but that's, that's not, not either here nor there. What I'm saying is that there's no reason why I can't tackle this story just because it's not the same stylistic choice as them. It's not going to ever be the epic fantasy that I want it to be compared to their epic fantasies. It's going to be my own fantasy. And now that that's finally clicked in my brain, I think I am finally ready to tackle this series. Which brings me to where we stand today with the writing challenge. Because now that the wheel has chosen this for me and I have started delving into it, I have discovered a lot of things that I didn't realize. So one of the first things I realized was that when I was coming up with the idea of writing this story about the mentor, I planned it as a novella. I don't know why, considering the fact that the sequel was an 85,000 word novel, still my longest novel to date. Um, I don't know where that idea came from. 
the other idea thing was that when I was looking through the outline, each of the single chapters, I wrote like paragraphs, descriptions of what I wanted to happen in, in the chapter. Um, each of those paragraphs contained enough information to be like three chapters. So what was essentially a 11 chapter outline was actually more closer to a 30 chapter outline. And I'm just looking at it going, what the hell am I thinking? So here's how I'm going to tackle that. I used to watch someone called Katie Tastic and I will link her channel below. She's no longer posting videos that I can tell. And I don't know if the way she outlines is the same as another one I'll mention. She did what she called the three act, nine block, 27 chapter outline. And since then, Kate Kavanaugh, again, I'll have her link in the description, talked about combining this kind of structure with Save the Cat. I don't know if it's because it was Save the Cat or if it's something completely different. All I know is that I was watching Cat's videos first, Katie Tastic's videos first, long before I was on YouTube myself. And she never called it the Save the Cat method. She just called it this uh, her outlining method. So I, it might be Save the Cat. If you have read, I haven't read Save the Cat. If you read Save the Cat and it sounds like familiar to you, that would probably be why. All that's to say is that I rewatched one of Kat's videos back when I did the seven day book challenge in the spring of Q1 back in March, because I was also writing a fantasy back then when I was doing Spell Gone Wrong. And I made notes based on her outline structure. So my plan for this fantasy, since it worked so well for that fantasy, I'm going to do it for this fantasy. I'm going to take my old outline that I wrote, I'm going to print it off on my computer, and then I'm going to gut it and I'm going to restructure it into the three act, nine block, 27 chapter outline. And I'm going to use, this is just my notes on it, but I'm going to use sticky notes and the back side of my Kanban board, which already has, oops, that kind of worked. It already has a plotted novel on it from when I did the Damned and Dangerous Quartet, books three and four. So I'm going to take those down and I'm going to replot the first book in the Skywriters of Altera book series. I'm going to do that before I actually get started with the five 24 hour novel challenge. Um, we're already a few hours into the day on the fifth when I'm recording this. I've already been playing around with the outline because I was really, just, I was originally just going to take that outline and redo it and fill it in and clean it up but um that's not working for me so I'm gonna do this instead and we'll see exactly how far I get in this challenge today um I'm I'm feeling pretty confident about this novel I'm no longer feeling pretty confident about the challenge itself but I'm hoping that writing this story will be a breeze once I start getting the details of the outline done because I've already been working on the world building so much in the past 15 years that I know at least this part of the world, like the back of my head. Like I know it so well, it's not even funny. So that world building portion is not gonna be a problem for me. It's just deciding what events are happening, especially like leading up to the sequel book that um, is gonna be a rewrite essentially of one I already wrote. <sighs> yeah, and then the other thing I have to decide is like in in this, in this series, Virginia Dare has already passed on. She's already considered a legend in their world. But I have to decide how much time has passed since her death. Did she just recently die? Has it been like how many years has passed since she passed? Um, so I've got to figure out that. I've got to figure out more of the timeline and how that correlates with everyone. I do know that the main character in the first book is in like her early 20s in the first book. So I've got to decide the timeline, the official timeline, and figure all that out. But I can do that while plotting. So wish me luck. We're going to, I'm going to dip out of here and play around with some post-it notes. I might get a new poster board. I think I need to get a new poster board because I want to redo this Kanban board anyways. I might have some poster board around here. I'm going to have to look. Hmm. hmm. Anyways, I'll check in with you guys later after I've finished doing a bunch of things. Okay, so I have finished outlining. I did note cards instead. I don't know why I thought I was going to do post-it post notes. I, I do want to do post notes, but I have enough index cards to do it index card-wise. So I have all of Act 1 done. Um, I don't do very detailed outlining. Like, that's, that's the extent of my outlining. It's not very much. Um, so as far as, like, how the outline is... This is part one of act one. 
part two of act one, part three of act one. And each of these is three chapters. So this is three, six, nine. So I have the first nine chapters outlined, which is cool. I just have to do the last, I don't know, have them ready, 18. But I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just worried about act one. It, it works. It's, it's flowing good. Um, this is like three quarters of my outline in the original 11 chapter outline. So I was missing a lot of stuff, which is great. Um, but doing it on index cards means I can throw it in my box of index cards for various stories. Like I already have Shifters and Mages, Hunter Portrayal in here, which I need to, I wasn't smart enough to number the cards like I'm going to do with Blood Dragon and they've been messed up. So I've got to reorganize them. However, I did do Spell Gone Wrong. I did outnumber those cards. So those, even if I mess them up, I can put them back in order. And I was reading through the Spell Gone Wrong ones and I realized I did like a mixture of this kind of outline along with, um, I actually did the, I focused more on Romancing the Beat because of the fact that uh, Spell Gone Wrong is a, a fantasy romance. So that's one thing I needed to keep in mind was that the type of outline I did for that is going to be slightly different. So good to know because there's less romance in the, the Altera series, um, at least with the Skyriders of Altera. There is more romance with the Seers of Altera than there is with the Skyriders of Altera. Um, so just a, just a note there. But yeah, it's Act 1 is outlined. I'm going to go take a nap because I've been awake since like 3.30, so I'm freaking tired. I'm going to go take a nap because I keep falling asleep. Now watch, I'm going to lay down and all of a sudden I'm not going to be able to sleep. And then after I get back up from my nap, if I even sleep, I am going to go ahead and start writing on Act 1. I know I don't have Act 2 outlined, but I think I have enough plot from just this to at least get a head start on what I wanted to do for this 24-hour novel challenge. And... um based on what I know I usually write for chapters, I write anywhere from 1500 words to 3000 words. And with fantasy, I tend to write anywhere from 2000 to 3000 words per chapter. So this right here is a good honk -a chunk of words, honestly. Let's just pretend they're each just 2000 words each. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. That's already 18,000 words at just 2000 words a piece. And if the chapters are closer to 3000, you can do the math on that. I'm not, I'm too tired to do that off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a good chunk of words. If I can get through even half of this today, I will be super happy and I can always outline more of the story later if I just hit a stopping point with writing. So anyways, I'm gonna go take a nap now cause I'm freaking tired. Check back later. So I told Justin what I was working on for this writing challenge and his exact words were about damn time. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that this is the one story where he's read it and he, um, he knows it in and out and, uh, I make him dinner. And yeah, uh, his reaction when I told him what I was working on was, was about damn time. And I was like, yeah, I figured that would be the response. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna finish making dinner and then I'm gonna get back to working on it. I have not written at all today. I finished outlining act one and that's all I've done. Yep. It's been a great day. Good morning, Dragonlings. It is Saturday. It's the 6th. It's the second day of the 24-hour novel writing challenge. And I have to... God damn, what the fuck did I do to my wrist? Anyways, um, I haven't written today. It is 10 o'clock, basically. I haven't written. I didn't write yesterday. I got the first act in the outline done. That's it. That's all I did yesterday. I think I'm going to start just writing that because that should get me a good 15,000 words, I think. And then I will outline Act 2 based on my notes. And then I will write that. Outline Act 3, write that. Um, am I going to succeed in this challenge this weekend? Probably not. I um, Because I didn't write yesterday and I'm so far behind today because I wanted to get up a lot earlier, but I also didn't set an alarm because I was like, ah, I'll wake up. I did not, in fact, wake up. I just got back from pet sitting, taking care of some animals and making sure they're good to go. 
until tonight when I feed them. So now I'm going to start writing. Um, Morgan Lee is streaming on her channel and I am going to join them on some sprints until they finish streaming. And then I'm going to, I don't know, I'm, I'm really tired. I'm tired. I'm not tired because I slept, but I'm like mentally exhausted already, which is bad for a writing challenge like this. So I've got to update this, my planner, with what I did yesterday. I'm going to do that first and then I'm going to get started on writing itself. That's where I stand right now. I'm going to cut this off and watch Morgan Lee stream and uh, go from there. Yeah. Check in soon. Okay. So I found a way to track sprints because I'm doing, I'm doing my combine board by task block. So I want to know how many 25 minutes I use in each day. So like I did eight sprints this day, but as you can see, some of them were 25, some of them were 30, one was 45, one was 25. Um, and then on this day, there was some 45s and some 20s. So what I did is I took, I added all the minutes up and I divided by 25. So in all actuality, I did nine task blocks this day and I did 8.2 this day. I'll probably round down to eight. Um, and the only time I might, or I might, what I might do is instead of doing this daily, I might wait until like the end of the week and then add them all up together and divide them and just do one count. I don't know exactly how I'm going to do it, but for now this works, except on the days where it's like 8.2. So I'll figure it out, but at, at least that's a solution, a semi-solution, but a solution nonetheless. We'll see if it works. Morgan is streaming. She's doing like a, tw <laughs> it's literally titled 12-ish hour ride a and so I've been over on Morgan's channel in the chat. I've also been streaming the Double Down Day streams for Sarah Cannon's Heart Breathings. Um, there's different people streaming for like three hour blocks. Why is my hand shaking so much? Anyways, um, so I've been hopping around between streams. I know, it's weird. I never do that. Anyways, um, Eva mentioned something in Morgan's chat that has got me thinking. And it's got me thinking about the fact that... Um, we're doing this writing challenge, this 24 hour novel ride challenge, and I'm not getting very far. In fact, actually, I haven't even started writing today. You want to know the most I've done? I have circled this chapter on the original outline that was 11 chapters long because that's going to be all of act two because that's talking about the fact that this person is taking classes, is learning how to take care of her dragon, is doing all this stuff. And I'm like, that shouldn't be just a single fucking chapter. That should be multiple chapters. And that's been the way with a lot of these chapters in this this outline is that all of the chapters have been like multiple chapters at one time. So I'm just, I'm flushing that out and I'm going to be going ahead to doing that. I started typing up the notes that I wrote on note cards yesterday, but I really don't feel like doing that. So I think I'm going to continue outlining because one of the things that Eva suggested was she was like 24 hour, uh, outline. And I was like, Ooh, actually that's an idea. Because it's taking me about an hour to do each of these note cards to think about the plot and decide what parts go where and stuff like that. So I did do, it's not eight hours of work yesterday, but I did do, I did nine task blocks, which means I did four and a half hours of work on the outline. And if I can do the same amount today and hopefully finish it. Then tomorrow could be an all-day writing day. Maybe. I, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure this out and work things in my favor, and it's not working. But at the same time, that's okay. I'm, I, I've am i pretty much decided this challenge, at least in the original idea of the challenge, to write 50,000 words in an entire weekend across 24 hours. Like, I'm pretty much figuring that's a wash. But if I can get something out of it, I am going to be happy with that. I was going to be happy if I could get 25k. However, at the time I said that, I thought the outline was like fully fleshed out, ready to go. I could just start writing and that was not the case. So revising my goal, if I can finish this outline by the end of this writing challenge, I will be happy. Um, will I have done the actual goals of the 24 hour novel challenge? No, but I'm okay with that because this is a story I haven't looked at in years. It's a story that I outlined. I don't know when this outline was made. I, 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 
I bought the cover, the pre-made cover for it, six years ago now. So, like, I haven't thought about it in years. So I'm okay with the fact that I haven't gotten very far. And I'm using this as a learning experience in the fact that if I want to do this challenge again, multiple things need to happen. And I will go into more detail about all of them at the end of the challenge itself when I finalize this vlog and wrap everything up and tell you the final results and stuff. But suffice it to say is that I am not unhappy with what I have accomplished this challenge. Like, did it go the way I thought it would? No. Was I prepared for it? No. <laughs> am I happy with the way it's going so far? Yes, actually, I really am. Um, all things considered with all of the challenges I have faced with this challenge so far. So, like, I'm not unhappy with the progress I've made. Don't get me wrong. I just, it's not what was supposed to happen. And that's okay. Things change. And that's part of the reason I like writing challenges so much is because of the fact that it tells me what my limits are. Like, the whole the whole idea with this, and I will have to do it in the future to try it again with the actual goal in mind. But the whole idea with this is, can, is it possible? And when, what I've learned from this so far is that at the state I am in with this particular project, no, it's not. And that is, in fact, a win in its own way, because it tells me what I am capable of. It tells me what I need to do to get to the point where I am capable of accomplishing this challenge. So all in all, yes, it's a win. It's just not in a, w a win in the way that the challenge itself is supposed to be. So like the challenge itself is to write 50,000 words, a novel, in... 24 hours spread out across three days, whether you do it like 10 hour day here, one day, five hour day here, five hour day. It doesn't matter how you split it out. That, that didn't equal up to 24, but that's not the point. However you spit, split, spit. <laughs> oh God, I think I need some, some drink. I need some caffeine in my life. Anyways, no matter how you split the hours, as long as the total hours is 24 across the three days you're doing this challenge, and you get 50k during that time that's the goal of the challenge and in that sense no I'm going to fail this challenge epically but that's okay because again learning things learning what I need to do to do this challenge again because I will be tempting it again so I can you know try to actually succeed at it and I again in my wrap up I'll have all the things that I did or did not accomplish and what I will do differently next time when I attempt this again so all in all, learning experience, we're getting there. We'll see where I get today. So, yeah. Check back in later. Don't mind the AC on in the background, but I wanted to give an update. Um, it's been a rocky day. I had every intention of writing at some point today, and it hasn't happened yet, which is fine, I guess. There for a bit, I had some external writing-related problems that I don't really want to get into details about. That we're still dealing with some problems but i finished my outline i don't know why i put it in this box because i'm going to start working on the actual story itself but i got all these index cards there's 27 of them for 27 chapters uh, my chapters tend to be between 2,000 words and 3,000 words so this is going to be anywhere from 54,000 words to i think i calculated it to like 80 something thousand words so it is fantasy. It's gonna be lots of world building. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah, I have been popping in and out of different live streams all day today. It is double down day with heart breathings, and so I've been following all those streams. And then Morgan Lee did a 12-ish hour stream um, earlier today. I think she, I think in the end it was about 10 and a half hours, not 12. But the plan was to write for like 12-ish hours until she got some stuff done. So I've been popping in and out of that one as well. Um, I missed the end of it. I was away doing the things that happened when it ended. But between all of the streams today, I got the entire outline done. And Jenna is streaming next for Heart Breathing's Double Down Day. So I will be starting to write during that. I'm going to take a break. I have to go do a few things. I have to start dinner. And then my live stream is at 9 p.m. And I will definitely be writing during that stream, even if I don't get any writing during done during Jenna's stream. Um, 
so that is fun and I might just take a break until my stream because of everything that's happened today as well as the fact that I've been working on this all day um, I woke up at 9 a.m. this morning roughly and I didn't get started until like 11 a.m. and even now I've been even since then I've been dragging my feet off and on trying to get this done I've had a bunch of different distractions. I've been watching YouTube videos in the background or listening to them in the background while the timers were going. I've been doing stuff in my planner, my digital planner for writing related stuff, changing up how I did things, which I will show you that next. Um, that's Pixel. She says she's hungry or wants attention. I don't fucking know. This cat who never meows at me, never jumps on me, never does any of that stuff has been getting really lovey-dovey with me lately and I don't appreciate it. What do you want? What do you want? You have food. Your litter boxes are clean. Your human has pets on you and loved on you. Why are you loving on my desk? She's literally rubbing her foot against like, here's the leg of the desk. And she's like, like that. And I'm just like, what are you doing? Does my desk need your hair on it? Is that what's going on? Let's see if I can show you guys. You want to know why I don't ever get any good clips of the cats doing anything that's funny or any of the things I talk about? Because the moment I go to film them, they disappear. I literally turn that clip off and turn the camera around so that I could show you guys what she was doing and she shot off with a as if like I'd offended her or something. So that's why you guys never get clips of the cats because things like that happen. Okay, so this is the digital planner. This is the weekly page and that's what I've been using to track like my sprints and stuff. However, today I noticed that uh, I was getting close to the bottom over here so I didn't want to do that. So what I did was I changed up how I was doing it. And so like the first three sprints I did today were each 25 minutes and I was still working on Blood Dragon. And then four and five were two different kind of numbers. And then six through whatever I get through. I think we're on sprint number seven now. Shoot, that's the one thing I'll run into. Uh, I'll have to figure out how to keep track of sprints that way. I'll have to go back. Fudge, I did not think this through. I'll have to figure something out. Okay, anyways, I might put tally marks at the bottom. Like, I've got I've got my bubble here where I'm going to keep track of, like, the total number of task blocks I do. Task blocks. So, um, I might start keeping a tally mark here of the sprints themselves. I'm going to have to think on this. Oh, well, but at least that'll save me some room because otherwise I was running into the fact that I was going to be out of room to put my own sprints when I finally get to them, so. Meh, I'll get there eventually. I'll figure it out. Oh, Pixel's back. Hey, Fatso. Why are you in here meowing me? Go, go bother your mother. Big yawns. What do you need? Why are you coming over here demanding my attention? That never happens. <laughs> okay, you just plop yourself down on the ground. I know, woe is me. Oh, there's a piece of trash on the floor I need to pick up. Meow. 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 Maybe this is where I'll keep track of like the sprints and I'll put the number at the bottom and then tally marks underneath for how many sprints I do of each kind. I don't know, I'm gonna figure it out. Anyways. Um, I've also been tracking who does sprints win, so that's been fun. Um, I left Morgan Lee's open, I just discovered how long it was, so I need to write that in. But yeah, this is this is how I've been tracking how long the sprints are. Or not sprints, streams are. And today has been jam-packed full of sprint streams. So, and I've been tracking this on the daily page. So, I haven't been marking this off, and maybe that would be helpful as if I do that if I track, but that's my, that's my task blocks, not my sprints, so I don't know. I will figure out a way to track the sprints somehow. Okay, this is going to be my last update for tonight. I have written 2,800 and, no, 2,087 words. Having a dyslexic moment there for some reason. Um, which I am extremely happy with. Now, granted, those 2,087 words are literally me taking my outline and writing it out. Can I have all my note cards? Thank you. Um, it's me taking my outline and writing it out in sentence form. So, like, this is nothing but, like, bulleted points. 
and I'm writing it out in sentence form and expanding upon some of it. There's no dialogue. There's nothing like that. So that's all I've done so far. And I have this much left to do versus this is what got done. So I have a lot more to do. But I'm extremely happy with where I've gotten so far. I am loving the story. It is near and dear to my heart. So I am super excited to continue on with the story. Um, I do need to update my planner with what has happened. I need to, um, I think there's a couple other things I need to do before I head to bed, but I'm going to be heading to bed real soon because it's 1130 now. Uh, I streamed and I got words in. I, the outline is finished, so I'm extremely happy with that. And once I have all of the outline inputted into my notion, I've got to update a couple other things in my notion about it too. But yeah, it's going, it's going well, just not in the sense of the challenge itself. The challenge itself is basically a bomb at this point. But writing this story is going extremely well. So I'm, ple I'm pleased with that. And I cannot, I, I can't be unhappy with that. It's going awesome. So yeah. Anyways, this is where I'm going to wrap this clip up tonight. And I will check back in tomorrow with whatever I end up doing on this story tomorrow for the last day of the... 24 hour novel writing challenge or 24 hour novel challenge yeah see you guys in the morning hello good morning it is the 7th i had to look at the time and date um it is the last day of the 24 hour novel challenge Ooh, i caught it ah nice um am i gonna get a whole lot of writing done today probably not I had the Breaking the Block live chat this morning, which I actually missed the first 20 or so minutes of because I had an alarm set and I turned it off and went back to sleep. To be fair, though, I woke up multiple times last night, so I was super tired. And everyone's like, but you had a late night doing Double Down Day and then you live streamed. I'm like, yeah, but actually I don't usually get a lot of sleep. So the fact that I got a lot of sleep is very weird. I am... I'm only upset because I was like, when I went back and rewatched the first portion of the Breaking the Block chat, I was like, oh, these are all questions that I have. I have things to say because, because this is exactly what I'm going through with this project. I'm like, with this, this 24 hour novel project, because this is a project I've been working on for 15 plus years. In fact, actually, I, I don't feel like I'm, I was ready to tackle it back then. Whereas I think, I think I'm more ready to tackle it now. Um, I've learned more about my writing style and about what I do and what I don't do and stuff like that. But suffice it to say is that I, um, I'm good to go there, but, um, uh, what to do today? Today, today I'm going to write as much as I can, but I've got other things I got to do. And I've already taken care of some of them. Like I was petty sitting this past weekend since the 4th of July. There was a bit of snafu with that yesterday, which has been all handled and, there was a break in the block this morning, but the other thing I'm doing is I've got my watch later list open, which is where when people post a video, that's I just automatically add it to my watch later list so that I can get to it when I can get to it. So I've got that up and I am downloading clips that I have done for different vlogs. Um, I've got like three different vlogs going at one time, which is scary to think about because I don't know how to keep them on track without watching all the clips over and over again. So I'm going to have to figure something out there. Um, technically have two cameras because I have two phones so I might start in the future doing different vlogs on different cameras. I'll have to figure it out. So I may or may not get to writing today which means I mean I've already failed this challenge so it doesn't really surprise me but at the same time I'm just like meh. I do have work tonight and I have to go shopping at some point for at least some baby basics because we need milk. We're out of milk. I used the last bit last night in dinner. Um, we need what else we got? We need mayo for tuna sandwiches. I think we're doing roast for dinner tonight, so technically we don't need milk right now, but I do want to get it before I go to work tonight, so i got to make a trip into town for that. And yeah, um, lots of things going on. Don't know how much writing I'm actually going to get done, but meh, we'll get there. Check in later. So I was editing the vlog clips from the 24 hour novel challenge, and I realized I never gave you guys a final update and thoughts and stuff like that, so here we are. Um, it's been a couple days since the challenge ended. It's Tuesday now. And um, so let's talk about it. The 
original idea of the 24 hour novel challenge is to write 50,000 words in a matter of 24 hours across an entire weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And you could split those hours however you want, whether you do 24 hours straight, eight hours each day, 10, 10, five, doesn't matter how you split them up. You can do it however you want. Um, but the goal is to write 50,000 words within that time limit. Did I succeed at this? No, not at all. Not anywhere close. I ended the weekend with 2,087 words, all of which were written during my live stream on Saturday evening. Um, I did have a lot of things going against me. I picked a project the day before the challenge started, which was probably the worst thing I could have done. Then I picked a project that I thought I had a complete outline for, but looking on it, when I printed it out, it was only for 11 chapters and there was a lot of information like that should have been split out between chapters. So I went ahead and re-outlined the entire thing. So on Friday and Saturday, I spent most of the day doing a new outline for it, which again is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, total time spent on the writing challenge was eight hour, eight, eight hours and 15 minutes, I believe. Yes. Eight hours and 15 minutes. It was like eight, two eight point two five, which is eight hours and 15 minutes. So did I even go a full 24 hours? No, I did not. Um, so in all sense of the actual challenge itself, I completely failed. I did not hit 24 hours. I didn't hit 50 K words. I didn't finish the novel in those three days. Like in no sense of the word did I actually complete the challenge. However, if, am I unhappy with how this went? No, not at all. In fact, actually, I'm very pleased with how it went. I was working on a project that I haven't looked at in several years. It was a project that goes along with a world that I started developing 15 plus years ago. So I was really happy just to get the outline, the new outline done, I should say. Um, so I ended with a really good outline, in my opinion, and a good sense of where this story is going. And to me, that was worth it, even if I didn't complete the challenge successfully in the original sense of the challenge. So not unhappy with how the challenge went. How, what would I change in the future? First of all, I would make sure that I was actually ready for the challenge. Um, I'd make sure that I had my project picked well ahead of time so that I could look through all my notes on that project and see exactly where I stand. Especially like if I use my spinning wheel of chaotic doom, I want to make sure that when I spin that wheel, I actually pick a project that is ready to write. Um, if I do, if I pick the project a lot sooner than I did this time, I will have plenty of time to read through everything and see where I stand on it and make sure I am ready to go so that I'm not spending the entire weekend outlining. The other thing I would probably change is make sure that it's not a weekend that I have to go grocery shopping because that actually did end up killing a lot of time because it was an errand weekend. Um, every other weekend is errand weekend and unfortunately this time it just it fell on errand weekend. It also didn't help that we were pet sitting and there was a snafu with the pets that we were pet sitting. I just never could get back in the headspace to write. Um, there was just no getting around it. All of this happened before I'd even really finished the outline. So I'm actually really impressed that I finished the outline in the first place. Make sure that there's no like outside sources that uh, are going to affect. I and I realize life happens even when you're live. Like I get that. But I can prevent as much stuff as possible the next time I do this challenge. Like make sure that I'm not pet sitting anybody's animals. I'm only responsible for my own. Um, that way if they get out, I'm just like, eh, fuck it. They'll come out when they come home kind of thing. The other thing I would probably do is like, because it's a weekend challenge, what I might do in the future is go into town and actually rent out a hotel room for the weekend and just write in town, like away from my family. Um, even if it means they, because we're only down to one vehicle, even if it means that they drop me off so that they could have the vehicle if they need it, because I can walk everywhere in town where I need to go and have myself a little weekend retreat and do this writing challenge. That might be something to consider in the future too. Um, 
because there was just a lot of distractions with the pet sitting, with the grocery shopping, with the, hey, what's for dinner? What are we doing? Kind of thing. All of the distractions led to me not getting in as much time as I wanted to. The other thing was is that my sleep patterns were all screwed up. I'm having problems with my allergies. My allergy medicine is not working the way it's supposed to. It's gotten to the point where I'm taking like four times the dosage I'm supposed to be taking. You're supposed to take one pill for every 24 hours. I've been taking four in intervals, like every four hours, one pill every four hours. Um, so yeah, my allergy meds aren't working and I'm allergic to my own goddamn pets. It, feels like because pet dander is the biggest cause um with all of the outside distractions and stuff it just there wasn't a lot going on writing wise i was not in the headspace 90 percent of the time so those are all the things i would change uh, make sure my project is prepped make sure there's no outside distractions maybe make a writing retreat um yeah so, would I do this challenge again? Honestly, yes. I actually would like to attempt this challenge again with all the things I just said in place. Like, I would like to try this challenge. Um, get, like, a hotel room, stay there for, like, a weekend and attempt it and just write all day long. I think that would, I think it would be really cool just to see if I could do it. And it might be something I do come maybe wintertime. I don't know. I'll have to figure out when I can do it. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out because I would like to attempt this again. What about you guys? Have you guys ever attempted this challenge? There is an official one that happens in, it happened in June. I don't know if it's a multi-time year thing or if it's an annual thing, but I'll leave the link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Let me know in the comments below if you have attempted this or would attempt it in the future and what would you do to make sure that you are completely ready to do this challenge if you were going to do it. That way maybe I can have some tips for the next time I try it. Anyways, that's all I have for you guys today, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, Dragonlings. Ooh.